You may have heard of the Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2 that has been circulating around the world. And today I wanna to break down the biochemical mutations that have occurred that created this Delta variant. Now the Delta variant has been shown to be 60% more transmittable. And it's hypothesized that this is due to certain mutations that have occurred on that spike protein. Now, I've already talked about how to read these mutations in the previous video that you can find on my page, but it's important to note that for the Delta variant, there are three mutations that occur on that spike protein that are of high importance. And that's because these affect the charge and the size of the amino acids that have now been mutated. And you can think of this like you're putting together Legos to build a set. And if you begin swapping out some of those pieces for either a larger piece or a smaller piece or a different colored piece, at the end, you're going to create a different object than what you had originally intended. And that's what's of concern if there's too many mutations that occur on that spike protein. At the end, the shape is going to be different than what was originally intended. Now, for these specific mutations of the Delta variant, the charge changes from three neutral amino acids to three positive amino acids. Now, amino acids have a positive, negative, or neutral charge. You can think of this like a magnet. Sometimes they attract each other, sometimes they repel each other, and that affects how they interact with other proteins as well as how they finalize their shape. So by changing to three positive amino acids, this can change how that spike protein comes together and then how it can interact with the ACE2 receptor. Second is the size of the amino acids that are substituted. And of what's of most importance is this proline at position 681 mutation to arginine. And that's because the chemical structure of proline is depicted here, which is quite small. However, the mutation to arginine of the chemical structure is depicted here, which is much larger. So that can also cause some changes to that spike protein affecting its final shape. And again, it's hypothesized that this charge and size changes is on the Delta variant of SARS-CoV-2 is what's allowing it to have some different interactions with the ACE2 receptor of our human cells, allowing for a higher amount of infection. But there is good news, as there have been some early trials looking at the vaccines against COVID-19 and, and their effectiveness against the Delta variant. And right now, the Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines have been shown to be effective at neutralizing the Delta variant of COVID-19. However, the other vaccines, such as Moderna or Johnson & Johnson, are still being tested, but it's hypothesized that they'll also be equally as, as effective. Now, they might not be as effective as their clinical trial data showed, but still effective at reducing hospitalizations and deaths. However, what was of most importance of these trials is that you need to have the two-dose regime if that's the vaccine that you are given, as the two doses boost your immunity, boost the amount of antibodies you have to not only fight off the Delta variant, but also fight off other variants of SARS-CoV-2.